1776, a year forever etched in history textbooks. Students still read of the brave patriots rising up against an oppressive colonial power, and with the flourish of a pen, declared themselves independent and birthed the United States. The document making public this breakup became known as the Declaration of Independence, and it stands today as one of the United States' most sacred texts. Generally, most people tend to focus on the sweeping all men are created equal part of the text. You probably had to memorize it in elementary school. But if you dig a little further into Mr. Jefferson's list of grievances for King George III, you'll find something else. He has excited domestic insurrections amongst us and has endeavored to bring on the inhabitants of our frontiers, the merciless Indian savages, whose known rule of warfare is undistinguished destruction of all ages, sexes, and condition. Funny you didn't have to memorize that part. Sports, the great American pastime. Treasured athletic institutions' names, mascots, and painted fans synchronized tomahawk chops have been prominent in American culture for decades. They've also been clearly labeled as offensive stereotypes of native peoples, and in the case of the Washington football team's former name, a racial slur. 70 years and counting of native resistance, lawsuits, public pressure, and more talking heads than you can count have pushed teams to begrudgingly rebrand. After removing Chief Wahoo in 2019, Cleveland's Major League Baseball team announced on July 23, 2021, that they were gonna go a step further by retiring the name Indians. And now it's time to unite as one family, one community, to build the next era for this team and this city, to keep watch and guard what makes this game the greatest. And together, we are all Cleveland Guardians. And with those moving words voiced by Tom Hanks, the great mascot debate ended, not so much. Overall, most sports fans agree or at least accept this change in tide, even if over half don't think Native American mascots are offensive. And on that side of the debate, Tom Hanks is no match against the former president. The insanity of the left knows no bounds, and both Indians and baseball fans should be greatly insulted. They want to take away our history, our heritage, our culture, and everything that holds us together. Unfortunately, protecting Chief Wahoo isn't just a Trump thing or a left versus right thing. Dehumanizing, erasing, and mischaracterizing Native people is as old as the United States. Fans of every political leaning and walk of life readily lend their support for a Chief Osceola and Renegade, ignoring well over half a century of Native resistance, the basics of systemic racism, and the realities of genocide, broken promises, and contemporary injustice. This might seem like a lot to put on sports or an offensive cartoon, but these sports franchises have something that Native people do not, our attention. As the public's eyes are drawn to casual racism for profit, overlooking the reality of living Native people's experiences continues. And in that entrenched skipping over an entire demographic of people, society demonstrates exactly what almost total erasure costs, dignity, and the basics of personhood. If you've disregarded or otherwise struggled to care about these issues, you're not alone. In 2019, the National Congress of American Indians found 90% of U.S. K-12 schools don't teach about Native Americans past 1900, and what is taught isn't the full picture. Yes, we're looking at you, Thanksgiving. The problem goes well past school textbooks. Most North Americans aren't remotely aware of Native news. The discovery of mass graves at former First Nations residential schools in Canada, disproportionate devastation that the COVID-19 pandemic had on Native communities, the murder rate of Indigenous women, 10 times higher than the national average, to extractive industry and climate change disproportionately affecting Native communities. Native mascots might be the loudest conversation about Native peoples, but in truth, they're just the tip of the iceberg. Native mascots are part of a larger movement to correct a forgotten history, to reclaim a stolen identity, and address the realities of Native peoples today. Native identity has sadly become a monolithic vision of an indigenous person. You've definitely seen some version of this formula before. Feathers, headdresses, face paint, beads, buckskin, and maybe an accessory like a pipe or a weapon. They're an Indian chief, a warrior, a princess who lives in a teepee sometime during the 1800s. What varies is their disposition. Are they noble? Are they savage? Native people exist only in relationship to others, not as people unto ourselves. This image couldn't possibly represent the nearly 600 sovereign nations in the United States, each with their own languages, customs, traditions, and laws. So where did this imagining of Native peoples come from? The images are everywhere. Movies, grocery stores, money, military helicopters, runways, cigarettes, toys, nursery rhymes, advertisements, cars, summer camp, boy scouts, PSAs, monuments, television, art, missiles, Halloween, cartoons, music festivals, and of course, native mascots. Hollywood has made over 4,000 films depicting native Americans. Unsurprisingly, an overwhelming majority of these representations were created by non-native people. And one thing these representations often share is a similar era. They're mascots and historical figures, images of a people that used to exist a people that were primitive, violent, indulgent, and mythical. Native people exist within U.S. society, 
Yet most folks have no idea who we are. The majority of Native people live in urban areas thanks to relocation assimilation efforts in the 1960s. Those not in urban centers often remain on reservations, where some of the most dire instances of suicide, lack of water access, poverty, health, unemployment, and injustice proliferate. Those aren't the stories non-natives hear because they don't fit within the American narrative. And so we enter the 19th century, the period where the mythical Native American emerges. By the end of the century, the shape of the United States as we know it today was forged. But as the United States stole, killed, and treated its way into more land, the population of Native peoples was decimated further. The assault against Native populations was waged on all fronts, culture, legislation, violence, and memory. The 1800s also saw the native population at an all-time low, more isolated than ever. While our role in pop culture as the fallen noble savage quickly grew as American forms of entertainment became more mass-marketed across the country and the globe. The presenting sponsor of Crooked History is Dems, the first of its kind investment fund that through extensive research ensures you're only investing in S&P 500 companies that donate over 75% of their contributions to democratic causes and candidates. You can finally put your money where your vote is. Search for the Dems ticker, that's D-E-M-Z, wherever you invest or visit dems.fund to learn more. Carefully consider the fund's investment objectives, risk factors, charges, and expenses before investing. This and additional information can be found in the fund's summary or full prospectus which may be obtained by visiting dems.fund. Whew! Why don't you finish the job? The Wild West would soon reach a global audience at the advent of film, creating a genre of film uniquely American and wildly popular. The Western captures audiences with nostalgic eulogizing of American civilization meeting the untamed frontier. It's American mystification in movie form. One of the oldest film genres, the Western continues to rake in earnings at box offices even today. From Nickelodeon showing Western B-movies to sweeping Oscar bait, no filmmaker has influenced or perfected the genre more than director John Ford. He created the language of the Western's American mythology. There is an identifiable hero a cowboy, and his natural villain, Native peoples, though oftentimes not played by actual natives. Ford referenced historical events, but wrote an ending where his good guy, the white cowboy, always wins. Scholars believe Ford's contributions fanned a loss of distinction between hundreds of diverse Native nations, the binary of civil versus savage, defender versus aggressor, and gave life to a primitive cinematic stereotype that reaches more people than true history ever has. As these depictions became more and more prevalent in culture throughout the first half of the 20th century, conditions on the reservations grew worse, and the United States began its term era, legally ending the existence of native nations. Approximately 2.5 million acres of trust land was removed from protected status during those years. Much was sold to or swindled by non-natives. During the same time period, the United States began a new effort to kill the Indian and save the man through partnering with several adoption agencies and churches to separate native children from their families. From 1941 to 1967, nearly a third of all native children were removed from their homes and adopted out to white families. 1960s gave way to a rising up of Native peoples and a pushback on numerous issues plaguing Indian country. Activism battled the termination policies, forcible adoption, land theft, and led to the end of the termination era, the strengthening of tribal governments, and passage of several protective laws specific to Native peoples. In 1972, 500 Native peoples with the American Indian Movement overtook the Bureau of Indian Affairs of the Department of the Interior in Washington, D.C. It resulted in the creation of a White House task force and reaffirmed Nixon's belief that tribal nations could better govern themselves. In 1973, the American American Indian movement occupied Wounded Knee, and protesters had a 71-day standoff with federal law enforcement. The government ordered a media blackout so no one would know what was happening. When Sasheen Littlefeather accepted Marlon Brando's Oscar in the broadcast of the Academy Awards, she spoke of the horrors at Wounded Knee and the ongoing treatment of Native peoples by Hollywood. Enormous pressure via Native activism and a growing body of Native lawyers and policymakers led to some major legal reforms and the passage of multiple laws for the protection of Native peoples in the land in the late 1970s, including the Indian Child Welfare Act, which helps keep Native kids with their families. But while tribal communities began the process of building power and community again, the outside world kept telling the same old trope about Native peoples. The one about cowboys and Indians, the mythic savages, the noble brave and the beautiful maiden, a footnote in the birth of the United States. Westerns and the Doctrine of Discovery remained one of the only film depictions of Native actors. Boy Scouts openly caricatured the stoic warrior and stories the pilgrims and Indians were taught to school children. Any modern stereotypes typically peg us as drunks on reservations, simultaneously rich with casino money and free schooling, yet poverty-stricken and pitiable all at once. And so generations of indigenous advocacy and activism continue into today. 
With the advent of the internet, Native people have found a new way to reach the world. The Not Your Mascot movement revitalized decades of advocacy against racist sports mascots. When George Floyd's murder exploded the boiling conversation on deadly racism in the United States, some of the richest sports franchises in the world finally relented to the tide of anti-racism. The Washington football team dropped its racial slur. The Cleveland Indians are now the Cleveland Guardians. Meanwhile, protests continue against those stubbornly clinging to nostalgic racism. The fight against big oil at Standing Rock reached millions via social media and eventually mainstream media. It reminded the world that indigenous peoples are still here, that our lands are still under attack. These fights have continued in many other front lines. Politically active and vocal native people using smartphones and social media to advocate for greater visibility have increased representation at all levels. There are multiple native people in US Congress, and now finally a first ever presidential cabinet position. Language and cultural revitalization efforts grow across Indian country, as do efforts to assert tribal sovereignty and remove the federal government from oversight and control of native governance. 2021 has brought a surge of content made by native peoples about native peoples, an invaluable advance in the war against harmful native stereotyping, and ultimately for the dignity, respect, and treatment of native peoples in our own lands. Some of these efforts have finally reached the mainstream. Representations of multi-dimensional native characters existing in the modern era are unprecedented and streaming to global audiences. Native creators, directors, educators, activists, artists, authors, and many others are doing the work to reclaim our narrative. When we tear down the images that obscure a violent history, we create space for accurate representation to take place, for our voices and struggles to be heard, for the beauty and strength of our people to come into the forefront. We are not relics of the past. We are living people fighting for justice, equity, and dignity. We are still here.